Well, after all we've done, I think we are pretty proficient in the PDM browser, but I think there's still a few technical questions that we can answer. For instance, when we go to make a new project, how do we make sure that the files and folder structure within that project will stay organized? How do we do backups on a regular basis? And can we edit files across multiple machines without needing to check in? These are pretty interesting questions. Let's jump to it now. Here in the PDM, I have three projects so far, Do Nothing, Gyroscope, and Radio Project. And I have a library that covers hardware. So we know that we can structure our files in a way that anything shared between the projects can go to the library and otherwise projects can have their own parts. This is purposefully set up in a way that if a project is deleted, it does not affect other projects and it prevents any unnecessary confusion or disorganization. You may note, although it isn't recommended, that if you would like to not need libraries, you can always put everything in one single project and create your subdirectories as needed for different projects and share files that way. But we're going to stick with the recommended workflow here. And let's also talk about how we want to define project. It could be just about anything you would like. Do we want our projects to represent every individual product that we make? Do we want to expand it and say, well, a project is a product line? Do we want to make a project for every contract the company has? With different needs between different businesses, it's important to define project as to what will work best with your needs. When we have a good determination of what a project should be, let's talk about templates that we can use for every project. Perhaps I would like to make a project and I'll call it new project. And when I go to add uh, directories, perhaps I'd like to have the name of the designer. And then within the designer's files, I can have a various amount of other subdirectories like subassemblies, fasteners, and so on. And I want to pursue with my project that way. But creating all of these new directories every time I make a new project can be a little bit time consuming. So let's talk about ways that we can speed that up. First, I'll go and create a certain class and I'll create this new custom class. I'll name it designer. And we go to our data and I'll add some instances for the names of designers. And now we have a uh, class with the names of several designers and we'll say okay to that. We'll create a new custom class and we'll say that for every uh, directory for a designer, we can have a subdirectory of certain types as well. We'll name this something like subdirectory types and we'll add a few instances. I'll say parts, fasteners, and then we'll say okay to that. Next, we'll go back and now we can make a project template with the information that we've just entered into our classes. So I'll go ahead and go with Tools, Manage Templates. And here I have the Alibre template, which has zero levels. But we can make a new template, which I'll do now. And I'll call this Designer Template. So far it has zero levels, but we can add two levels. The first level will choose a type of designer and the second level I'll choose the subdirectory types class that we've just made. And I'll say OK to that. So now we can put it all together and see what it looks like when we use a template that we've just created. I'll go to my projects and create a new project now notice we have our default template right here. So I'm going to change this to the designer template that we've just made. And we'll call this new project. A very innovative name indeed. 
Now, with our project made, I can uh, right click and choose a new folder inside. And this is where things start to change, right? Because if I jump into my new project, it's blank just like everything else. But when I go to create a new folder or directory in here, well now our folder type is uh, forcing us to choose our designer so that it will conform to the structure that we want, right? We've designed a structure for our uh, template to take and now we are able to function within it. So I can choose a certain designer. And when I go into this designers directory or folder, I can create a new folder. And of course we are limited to subdirectory types. And so we can choose one of the uh, parts for, or one of the folders for our designer rather. I can go into my parts folder and I can create a new subfolder as a generic folder, right? There's no limitations. Now, let's say that I go into my new uh, project here and I wish to add a new folder. I can add a new designer. So I can still add a custom value should the class that I originally made not have everything that I want. I can go visit my classes and I can see my designer class over here. When I go to edit it, Wilbur Wright has been added as one of the values within my class automatically. Okay, so that's ways that we can create project templates so that our folder directories and structures will be consistent and conform to exactly what we want. It also may be worth mentioning in this video that as we continue to add important information and create our projects, the data, of course, will become more and more valuable to us. And we may want to take certain precautions to make sure that it is properly backed up. Let's go through how to back up data. And here we are in our Libre PDM server management console. And when we go to tools, I have a few tools at my disposal. I'd like to schedule backups. And my window pops up and I have options for backing up. First, we can choose a backup location. Right now I have it set to my desktop, but you can choose the ideal place to store your backups and which safe you would like to back up from if you have more than one safe. And we must check perform daily backups. This ensures that you will always have backups from the day before. But what do we wish to retain after we perform a daily backup? Perhaps we would like to keep not just the backup from yesterday, but the backup from the last seven days or 10 days or however many days you would like. You also may wish to retain a backup based on every day of the week. Maybe I want to have backups from Monday, Wednesday, Friday and we can choose the last, say, five weeks, or however length we would like to keep our backed up data. We also can choose a day of the month, perhaps on the first, the 15th, and the last day of the month, we would like to have a backup retained and keep it for the maybe the previous 16 months. We can also choose when things get backed up. In this case, we can choose midnight or 2 a.m. And what will happen is this will start up, perform a backup, and then close down again. It should be rather convenient to run this at a time when you're likely not using your Alibre safe. And so the backups will likely and largely not even be noticed. And so we will say okay when we are finished with our backups. There may be times when you wish that you could edit a file like this not check it in and work on it somewhere else on another machine. For example, perhaps I'm going to make some changes to this part of my radial engine. And perhaps as I go through and uh, make some changes, right, I roll things back and then all of a sudden it's time to go home. I got to leave work, but I don't want to check this in in its state, but I still need to work on it from home. Well, let's talk about some options. First, I'll save this and I won't check it in, right? So we're not going to check that button, check in the safe. I'll simply say, okay. 
So our changes are captured locally on our safe, but are not visible to others. And thus we're able to preserve some data integrity. If I wish to take this home and work on it, what I can do is use our shelving commands. First, I'll uh, right click on my radial engine and I'll choose shelve files. And when I do, I'm asked for a target location, which will be on my local computer. I'll select my desktop and say OK. And as I shelve them, now I have a package that shows up on my desktop that has the AD underscore SHL extension. I can take this uh, file home and look on my browser there. Here I am at my home machine now, and I have my AD underscore SHL file that I was able to generate from shelving the files. On my home machine, I can navigate from my projects into my radio project here, and I can see my radial V27, and I can see that it is locked from my computer at work. But I still want to edit this. So I'll go to Tools up here, Unshelve Files, and I'll navigate to the uh, file that I generated. I'll say OK. And now I can go and edit. And just like that, I can see that uh, I'm still right in the middle of where I was before. I can go ahead and select edit here. And make my changes. Once I'm all finished, I can hit the save button now. And notice that I am free to check this into the safe. If I hadn't have uh, unshelved my files, I would not have been able to check this button. And so I've been able to check in my changes into the safe from my home machine. One important thing to note is that I am logged in in the same account at home as I was at work. And because of that, I was able to shelve and unshelve files. If I'm trying to share a shelf file with another Libre account, it probably won't work at this time. Be sure to share the same shelf file with the same account when you go to move things around. And that is how we can edit files between multiple machines without having to check them into the safe. So to answer our questions, indeed we are able to back up files on a regular basis. We indeed can organize our projects before we even start. And of course, we'll be able to edit our files across multiple machines just by using our shelf and unshelf features. Hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.